As they say, old things often become new again, and I'm seeing a lot of retrospective reviews lately from a lot of high-profile YouTubers on VHS camcorders. Not too long ago, Marcus Brownlee and Casey Neistat teamed up to do a look back on the JVC GR1 home camcorder for the show Retrotech. In just the past few weeks, Caleb at DSLR Video Shooter released an interesting video on VHS camcorders and even used one for the production of said video. Potato Jet and Epos Vox also put out videos stressing the importance of backing up your old home video recordings to a digital format so that you don't lose those precious memories. But I did that before it was cool. Anyway, today's video is a bit unconventional. I generally try to talk about tech that's going to save you money, but this is just going to be one of those cool things that I've wanted to do for some time. I want to take modern digital video, convert it to analog, then re-digitize it so that you can work with it in modern video editing software. Now I understand that most people are just going to get this look in post-production with video editing software, but depending on the skill of the video editor and the keen eyes of the viewer, sometimes it looks fake and it just stands out. That's why I'm hoping that using this method it's going to look a little bit more authentic and look a little bit more real, like something that was filmed 20 years ago on an old VHS camcorder. The production method that I'm going to show you here was actually inspired by Tim and Eric. It's a method that was heavily used in Check It Out with Dr. Stephen Brule. They did this to make the show look like 80s and 90s public access or small town news. If you're only going to do it as a one-off quick effect, save money and just do it in post. So why not just record it on a classic camcorder? Well, you certainly can, but I personally believe that doing it digitally gives you more control. But I've talked about this enough. Let's get to it. First off, let's take a look at the hardware that you will need for this. You'll need one of these analog to USB capture cards. I got this one from eBay for under 10 bucks. Normally, I would recommend using the S-Video input on this card, as it'll give you a better picture. But we want this video to look extra crusty, so I'm going to use the composite, aka RCA inputs, instead. I plug this into a USB port of my PC and use OBS to record the feed. Next, we'll need an HDMI to analog converter box. I picked up this one from eBay for $8.49. You'll feed your HDMI output into this box's HDMI input port, and then the composite side feeds to the analog USB capture card. In this instance, I'm recording everything that I want to convert on a Canon ELPH100HS. I'm just using this camera because it's really easy to play back the video over HDMI. If your camera doesn't support playback over HDMI, you can just play the video with an HDMI player, like the Amazon Fire Stick but this does add another step to the process. Now I will say that this is the most finicky capture card that I've ever worked with. Setting it up can be a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna go through how to do that right now. So in OBS Studio, we're gonna add a new scene. I'm gonna call this one Analog Capture Card. So now I'm gonna add a source. This source is a video capture device. I'm gonna call this one just Analog Card. Okay, so it picked up my GoPro that's feeding into this card, no problem. But uh, the first time that I did this, it wasn't quite so straightforward. And if you're running into this problem where it's not picking up any video, your problem probably lies in these two buttons right here, configure video or configure crossbar. So when I first set this up the first time around, I had to go into configure video and this was set to one of these PAL sources down here. So if you're not getting any video, check to make sure that this, if you're in North America, this uh, set it to NTSC underscore M. Um, and if you are still not getting video, go into Configure Crossbar. Change this from S Video In to Video Composite In. I'm going to check Link Related Streams, hit Apply and OK. You'll probably get video if you if you fiddle around with what's in the settings in these two buttons, you will figure it out. 
Um, as we can see right now, we've still got this green bar underneath the video, and we don't want that. The way you get rid of that is change your resolution slash FPS type to custom, and then select 720 by 480 if you're in the US, or 720 by 576 if you're using a PAL format. Now we can see that that's gone. We can also change the FPS. I'm just going to leave that at default. And what we can do now is that I've got this recording format set to 1080. I can um, go in here and what we're going to do is hit transform and uh, stretch to screen. That gives us the full screen view for this setup. So if you want to get everything as close to your final product in OBS before you hit any kind of um, post-production in your video editing software, keep in mind that you can go into the configure video and you can mess around with these settings and change. You can bump up or take down your contrast and brightness. You can change your hue, you can change your saturation, you can change your sharpness, and we'll just hit apply there. And as you can see, we're getting more analog crustiness in our video here before we've even hit start recording. So it's gonna give it more of that classic VHS look. I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to set all of that back to default. But one other thing that you can do in OBS is you can also um, you can also add filters to your video sources. You right click, go to filters, and here I'm going to put a color correction filter on here. And we can do things like take the gamma up or down. We can take the contrast up. We can take the brightness up. We can take the saturation up or down. We can shift the hue, and as you can see, right now this looks like really bad VHS quality. So that's another thing that will save you a little bit of time in post-production if you choose to just record everything in OBS. You can have a setting ready to go, have it applied, and then when you hit start recording, this is going to basically be um, your your look before you bring it into your video editing software. And if you go too far with a filter and you want to reset everything, you can either just delete the filter or you can uh, go over here and hit defaults and it'll change the video back to, to the default look. So pretty easy and I think it's a potentially a big time saver in your post-production. So at this point, you can just capture your recording and it's going to look fully analog, complete with god-awful interlacing. But if you want to take it a step further, I stole this method from Check It Out with Dr. Stephen Brule. Route a VCR in between the analog converter and the capture card, and randomly use a rubber mallet to just beat the bejesus out of the VCR. It'll throw off the video's vertical sync and make it genuinely look like an old damaged recording. For this, I turned my VCR upside down and smacked the bottom of the unit while I was capturing the video. It was more susceptible to the jarring that way. Now it goes without saying to use an old VCR that you don't care about if you choose to do this. Another thing you can do is while you're recording, you can mess around with the composite cables to create imperfections in the video. Just unplug them and quickly plug them back in. Do things like wiggle them around. Analog video is sensitive like that. And you can get some crazy effects doing this. If you really want to complete that retro look, you can record in a 4x3 format, but I prefer to overlay black bars in post. That way, it gives you more control because you can reframe your 16x9 video. When I did this, I just used a simple PNG file with a 4x3 cutout in the middle, and I put a bit of blur on the edges to make it look a little more real. So you're probably thinking that this is a very lengthy process to go through just to get some crappy looking video, and you're right, it is pretty lengthy. but. It doesn't have to be. What I'm doing now is I'm recording in real time a direct feed out of my GoPro into this capture card. So there, I won't have a digital copy to work with when it's all done. I won't have the master to work with. I will have this as a uh, direct analog capture 
but it's just a matter of what do you want to work with in the end. If you want to do it quickly, you can do it this way and just have the final product ready to go, ready to work with in your video editing software. But if you want the original digital copy to work with and the analog transfer, you're going to want to record it digitally first and then run it into the capture card, play it back and uh, record it in OBS that way. That'll give you both versions to work with. It's just a matter of do you want the options or do you want to save the time? It's totally up to you. So that's it guys. I don't really have a use for doing anything in my projects for using this in this way, but it's certainly a method that you can use to get that analog look. Let me know in the comments below if you would use this method to create any cool projects or if you would just bypass this completely and just do it in post. I understand either way. Also, I have a really special announcement right now. I just got my first supporter over on Patreon, so I want to give a huge thank you to Tammy Ford, who helped make this video possible. If you would like to help out on Patreon, there's going to be a link in the description below, but I certainly don't expect anything, especially as hard as things are right now. Look out for you and yours first. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of my other videos. And if you want to really help my channel grow, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.